at the Disney Movies with the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. I I got no fun intro this week. It's, it's Return. <laughs> <laughs> it's Return to Witch Mountain from 1978. He's the boy with intergalactic powers. He's dangerous. Others. She's his equally far out sister. They find themselves pitted against each other when they return from Witch Mountain. <laughs> Yes, it is. And this movie's a doozy. It's, yeah, I I have a lot of mixed feelings about this movie. I so was, do I, because it's kind of a, it's like a, it's like a, a two-faced movie or something. Yeah, like I was hoping for like that amazing 1970s Disney cheesy magic. Wait, you didn't get any of that? Well, but it's not, it was missing some things. It was definitely missing plenty of things. But I will say, and I got so delighted when we were done watching this movie, because it was really bothering me what movie I had seen. That I was Because last week I was like, oh, I feel like I might have seen this. They're like, there's a sci-fi thing, and there's two kids, and they're siblings, and they put their hands. And I was like, the little girl looked like Elizabeth Moss. Well, guess the f*** what? So what I watched was a 1995 TV remake by Disney of... The first oh. one of these movies, and it stars a young Elizabeth Moss. There you go. So, that, that actually makes some sense. So I figured it out, and I was delighted. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't be watching that, but now I kind of know the plot of the original one. I so. thought that the kid with glasses and the earthquakes, I thought he was like uh, Corey Feldman, but it wasn't. Yeah, he... So I thought a couple of those kids were like, oh, they look kind of familiar, but Mm-mm. no, they don't. No. Nope. There's no familiarity. Yep. I mean... Really, none of these people, I guess, other than Betty Davis and uh, Count Dooku, have any kind of... Uh, <laughs> it's really funny that you referenced Christopher Lee as Star Wars, but immediately I was like, oh, it's... What's his face from Lord of the Rings? Sauron or whatever. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't seen Lord of the Rings, though. So. Oh, okay. See, that's where I recognize him from, but yeah. I also recognize him from Star Wars. But immediately I was like, oh, Lord of the Rings... I mean, yeah, so obviously the two main villains are pretty, I mean, really famous actors. Oh, yeah, super. And, I mean, really, they're the main characters, because otherwise you're just left with Tia as a main character, because Tony is not a non-factor. Uh, but before we get any further, you should read the synopsis. Oh, yeah. I have it pulled up. So, <clears throat> Return from Witch Mountain, 1978, classified as science fiction family action adventure. Los Angeles teeters on the brink of disaster when two greedy criminals manipulate a boy's supernatural powers for their obvious, or for their own devious gain. But the boy's sister and a streetwise band of truants join forces to try to save the city from destruction. <laughs> that is probably one of the worst descriptions I've ever read. I don't know, though. I mean, it's accurate to a point, but... Save Los like, Angeles from the brink of destruction. Oh, you mean the last, like, five seconds of the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't want to reveal that they kidnapped a kid and, like, drugged him. and. Yeah, we'll get, in, we'll get into happened. all of the questionable actions by adults in this movie towards children. <laughs> yeah, you mean all of them? Mm-hmm. All of their actions? Yeah. Yeah. So, the director really has only done a slew of B-movies, and that's a it. A slew. This dude has done a mountain <laughs> of B- and C-level <laughs> movies and TV shows. Would you say it's a witch mountain? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, he has done a ton of crap. Correct, sir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Very he... experienced director, which is fine. Because I don't think the direction was the problem with this movie. I think the writing was probably most of the problem with this movie. Maybe the special effects? Well, the special effects, they didn't spend any money on this No, movie. I mean, this came out one year after Star Wars was released, so... Yeah, and it was hilarious. It, the special effects were hilarious. Oh my god, they were so bad. They were bad, but they were funny. So bad. Yeah, no, the, the, the writing was pretty bad. Like, the dialogue was awful. Mm-hmm. The story is weak, or whatever, but like the dialogue was for me the worst part of this movie. The sort the story is like every other seventies TV show. Like every single one of those TV shows had an episode about like mind control, 
and this kind of stuff. Like, yeah. this was a well-beaten path in the 70s. And this is towards the end of the 70s. Right, so. that's what I'm saying. It's a well-beaten path at this point. Although, I feel like the first one would probably be better than this one, I would, I, I I would, would hope, imagine so, right? yeah. This, to me, seems like... Because you notice that the writing, is, like, some other dude wrote it based on this guy's characters. Right. This, to me, seemed like it was purely a money grab movie. Well, sure. I mean, it's probably in the same way that when we watched The Monkey's Uncle that was we didn't know was a sequel at the time. Right. Is a sequel. And, it, and it's, ba- yeah, it is basically The Monkey's Uncle. Even has mind control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Monkey's Uncle and this are similar, other than the, this one has a one contiguous story throughout the whole thing. And it doesn't have a killer theme song, so that's missing. Oh, oh, oh. Don't, okay. This doesn't have a killer theme song. But this has killer 70s brown chicken, brown cow music. Yeah, like 70s. All through it. Yeah, it's like 70s cop, disco, funk, porn music. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> like, you can tell what's going on in this movie the whole time just by the music, which is hilarious. Because there's also the really suspenseful music and the suspenseful parts. Yeah. Yeah. This movie, yeah, they really knocked that out of the park. Okay, so 70s beats aside, though, <laughs> it's <laughs> what it. So overall, what were what did you think about it initially? What is your what is your first initial thought? A very entertaining bad movie. Was it that entertaining though? The first half was terrifyingly bad. Was I was bad. pissed, but the second half wasn't that bad. The second half, it actually started to make some sense yeah. and pick up steam. Like, I was like, oh, okay, this is this is kind of good. Tia ends up being a pretty good main character. So where do you consider the turn in the movie? At what point was it? When they went to the museum. I would say that's probably fair. Yeah, yeah. everything until the museum was crap. <laughs> Other than maybe the earthquakes. The earthquakes are pretty funny. See, I don't even remember what happened before we get to the museum, so we're going to have to talk through it because I... So that's what I'm saying. I've that's how for- bad it was. I've already forgotten, like, 90% of this movie. Okay, well, we'll go through it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, okay, so let's just start. We'll just nail through it. Uh, the movie opens with some horrible crap. Oh my God. graphics and credits and a uh, cheesy UFO flying into it, California. It's the cheesiest UFO. It's literally like like what they did is take like a bowl or some sort of like fake like some sort of other card, saucer cardboard <laughs> UFO that they've made and they somebody like held it out in front of the camera and was like in the corner of the camera. So not even like it was on a string, like literally yeah. in the corner and they were like just kind of moved it around. <laughs> And they land in the middle of the Rose Bowl, which is empty. Right, because it's not in season or whatever. And Right, but it's always in season because they have, like, music. It's a, it's a huge venue oh, in I California. Yeah, 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 it is. Um, and, you know, just happens to be nobody there. So right. they can land a flying saucer on the 50-yard line. <laughs> So weird, and that's probably some sort of reference to the first movie. I'm guessing maybe it has but, to be. But if not, if you think about it, if you were to land a flying saucer in the middle of one of the largest cities in the world, uh, that is protected on all four sides. It's kind of genius. <laughs> yeah, except yeah. for I mean, like you said, it's never all the way closed, so there would be somebody there doing some kind of security or you would like think. you would think something. And there's two kids that get out of it with Uncle Benny. Yeah. they Uncle Benny sends him off with this cabbie who's all about his tip. And he's driving super wackadoodle, and you don't understand why until way later in the movie. I don't even still understand why, but you'll explain it to me. But Okay, so we're just going to explain it now because I'll forget otherwise. But later in the movie, when he picks up the dude who turns into a goat... Yeah. He's talking about how he wants to be a race car driver and how fast his cab is, how much power it has, and that's why he's driving all crazy and fast. Is that why he's wearing the silver jacket, too? Yeah, but they don't oh. explain it at the beginning. Okay, gotcha. They explain it in the middle, and, and I was like, oh, well, that explains all the crazy driving he was doing. 
that they should have explained that. <laughs> I just noticed his jacket. Well, and before they even get in the car, they're like leaving the stadium, and then that's when immediately right off the bat they show that these kids have powers. Right, which I think you're supposed to know. Well, right, because it's a sequel, but right, right, um, yeah, because they and basically they can manipulate matter with their minds. Yeah, uh, as far as I can tell, their powers are infinite. Yeah, which there doesn't seem to be a limit in space or time on what they can do. Right. And they can, um, we find out at some point, I don't remember when, they can talk to each other, like, telepathically, Telepathically, because they're they're twins or whatever. It doesn't take long. Right. But so... Because they get in the cab, and we go to the scene of these people. Well, so here's the thing, is that, like... It's never explained, like, what, where they were supposed to be going. They're supposed to be going to some hotel, but, like, are they going to visit somebody? Or, yeah, there like... was supposed to be somebody on the other side. Right. So, that was never explained, like, who was waiting for them. And why they didn't go look for them. Exactly. Yeah. Which, that was the biggest problem I had with this movie. I was like, who was waiting for them? Why weren't they searching for them? Why wouldn't they have the address of where they were going or the name, like, so that Tia could have just gone there? Right. Like, that that was a huge plot hole, and it's part of the reason I was so pissed off at the first part of the movie. It didn't make any sense. But because so, it didn't make any sense. Well, and, like, so they're in the cab, he's driving crazy, and then he runs out of gas. And, like, for a hot second... But it seemed like they were f***ing with him. Right. That's and what, I think they were, because later, after this couple things that we're about to talk about happen, and he, like, puts his can of gas in there... A bunch of gas spills out of the cabby as he's out of the cab as he's taking off. Right. So they're messing with him and he pulls over and he gets out to go get gas and leaves them in the car unattended in LA in the seventies. Yeah, but that was normal. That <laughs> no, was I know. totally fine. I know. But here's the thing. Actually, you know what was really weird about that is that he didn't make them go get gas. Right. That was that would have been more seventies. Or he would have been like, Okay, get out. No, you kids get out and go get the gas. Yeah, you go hike and bring it back, and but, I'll be sitting here reading a porno magazine. <laughs> so when he leaves, then in the meantime, I have to, exp- I guess, explain why the part that was so like, okay, right. So in the meantime, then it goes to these people that are clearly villains because they're driving some like James Bond that British car. That car is awesome. I don't know what it is. I didn't take a look it, close right. enough, but that thing was awesome. Well, and the music like changes like. That's what I'm saying. The music yeah. will tell you everything you need to know while it's happening. Right. And they whip out this mind control device on some dude named Sickle, who is one of the nastiest, oh. most skinny, pockmarked well, mother. Ah! I've ever seen in oh, my life. Oh my god. Okay, so there were a number of things that were disgusting about these people. So, <laughs> Betty Davis's teeth. Oh, yeah. Good lord. The cobs of straight corn that she oh, had going. They were like gray. They like, were yellow. Yellow gray. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I was like, and she had this bright red lipstick. Oh, yeah. On her yeah. super thin lips yeah. that I was like, and I always thought Betty Davis was supposed to be like this like beautiful, glamorous person, and maybe she was. She was. If you look back, I was like, oh, so okay, I get it. Clearly she just smoked too many cigarettes because Betty Davis has. Right. <laughs> Which she did have some kind of eyes. Yeah. Um, crazy. But she's she's you know, she's older in this movie, but the lipstick with like it just accentuated how and also now it's probably better color definition than it was in the yeah, 70s it's worse in hd oh my god i just every time she was talking that's all i could look yeah. at was her gray chiclet teeth it's true and she played a great villain as the story no, went she on. was she was great she was my favorite character in this movie easily oh, okay yeah that's fair but so it's yeah they're basically it's her and then christopher lee's character victor Who's this evil genius scientist dude? Right, and so he has implanted this little device onto Sickle's like head, basically. Yeah, behind his ear. He's controlling him and telling him to go up to the building, and she starts freaking out and like knocks the thing out of his hands, and so they can't stop him from walking. Well, yeah, after they give him a bunch of orders, said he was afraid of heights, so he just straight walks out the building. Somehow, uh, Tony, the uh, one of the little aliens. Sees this long before it happens. He's like, something bad is about to happen to somebody around here. And I'm thinking, if you can see that in L.A. in the 70s, 
that's all you'd be able to see. Is right. Is bad things happening to people? It's like, oh my god, these eighteen children are about to be molested all around. Me. Like, oh my gosh, there's like seventy five <laughs> prostitutes that are about to get murdered. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, exactly. And they're not in like a bougie area. No, they're, they're in a terrible part. Right. And here's the thing. Okay, so he goes over and saves the dude, right? Stops him with his mind. And granted, they never show him being able to see the future again because he'd probably be able to see himself getting abducted. Well, pretty much from but... this point on, uh, so they he saves the guy, brings him down to the ground, and... But, like, he's hovering there, and then he just walks around and is like, ooh, blah, blah, blah. And then the people come over because they see him, and they're like, oh, it's that kid. And it's like, why would you think it was that kid? Like, why would you... I think it was pretty obvious when the kid started walking up. Right. And they go over there, and they're like, how'd you do that? He's like, I manipulated the matter. And it's like, okay, if you're an alien, why wouldn't you be instructed, like, don't tell people about your powers? Because they're naive. And so they abduct him, right? They shoot him up with some drugs in his neck. And then, the, meanwhile, then, when that happens, Tia is back in the cab, and she, like, can sense what's happening, so she goes looking for him in the middle of this shady area, and this is the biggest fake thing ever, like, oh, there's not some random dude that's gonna come up and try to get you, like, come on. Well, the earthquakes found her before the randos found her. <laughs> but, I mean, I just, I did, that was the one part I was like, no, you would have been, as soon as you were alone in that cab, it you would have been murdered at some point in there. Like, I no, just. you just gotta give it a little time. She, <sighs> she got lucky. God. So, basically, she goes out and looks for him, and then she tries to go back to the cab, and the cab driver has come back, sees both the kids are gone, so he's like, well, I'm out of here. Well, yeah, because he lost his pair. I mean, why wouldn't he leave? Yeah. And then there's, like. These goons start chasing all these kids around. <laughs> and there's some rockin' 70s jams, like... Boink, 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 yeah, boink, yeah. Boink. <laughs> there's some real 70s jams going on around here. So they... The the goons, quote-unquote, surround all these kids, and somehow Tia got swept up in that. Well, because she was, like, walking. She was just wandering Yeah, around. and they, yeah. like, intercept her, and they're like, the goons are coming, you better run, so she gets, like, scared or whatever. Well, yeah, she just starts running because the kids are running, she's like, oh... Okay. Yeah. Um, so then she, like, attacks these kids with a bunch of trash cans and trash, which is hilarious. And they're all, like, <laughs> rolling on the ground, like, I can't get up. And, it's like... <laughs> and so then the, she goes with these kids, the Earthquakes are their names, and they're like, oh, are you in a gang? And she was like, no. And, like, they're, like, confused because they're apparently these tough kids. But one of them is named Dazzler. <laughs> they're like the lightest weight gang possible. And they're like, what, nine? All of them? Nine, ten, eleven. It's and just just effeminate. Well, I mean, and that's the point. They're yeah. supposed to be, because like, later they're like, oh, my mom's going to yell at me. Like, they're trying to be tough, but they're just a bunch of, like, kids. You know, yeah, they're just ridiculous. Kids, yeah. But basically, then they're going to help her find Tony. And then uh, Mr... <laughs> Yo yo, <laughs> Yakamoto, um, yo yo, which seems like it's offensive. Oh, but... it's pretty. That's pretty racist, yeah. <laughs> and like this guy um, was one of the strangest looking people I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just a little weird. But I found him very entertaining. No, I he was him. he I was like he I was like funny. Yeah. So, so he works for the board of education, and he's just driving in this van around L.A. looking for these truant children to bring them back to school. Which is, like, one of the sweetest vans I've ever seen. Yeah. But, and I, I guess they did do that back in the uh-huh. day. They did have truant officers. They went and looked for kids around town because back then, if you didn't go to school, it's not like now where you'd stay at home and, you know, like, play video games and whack off to internet porn. Like, you're gonna... Back then, you'd go run in the streets and... Run go, amok. Go get into stuff. It's not like now they'd never be able to figure it out. Or they would. They'd just go to your house. Then they take Tia to where they their hangout. And at first I thought, oh, this is where they live. I thought they were all orphans for a second. But it's just like some abandoned house. And they're like, well, we gotta go home now. <laughs> so yeah. she just sleeps there, which there would be like 70 other vagrant people living there. But whatever. Yeah, but not... So not back then. Like, I can remember going into abandoned houses, and, like, there weren't, like, every abandoned house didn't have, like, 80 drug addicts living in it. Like, 
You could know. go into an abandoned house. I guess they probably still had state hospitals back then, didn't they? They had state hospitals. They had, like, all those roach motels. Like, there's places for low-income, dirty people to hang out and stay. I don't think I've ever walked through an abandoned house. No, it's fun. <laughs> it's frightening, but fun, because you never know if, like, the floor is going to fall through. Right. Oh, and then it goes back to, uh, like, the... um the lab or whatever oh wait, wait wait but there's one scene in here or one line in here that can't go by it it's mm. like you can't be tough and educated oh, yeah. too because <laughs> the kid's talking about not going to school yeah he wants to be tough and not educated so because <laughs> you can't be both you can't be smart and tough right right it totally makes sense yeah, it definitely had a few gems of one-liners in here because Plenty. when they go back to the lab and they have Tony hooked up to the machines and his energy is, like, making him go bonkers, the Betty Davis's character, uh, Leha or whatever her name is. Letha. Letha, thank you. She, which, what is that, supposed to be lethal? <laughs> um, <laughs> but she... It's like Lisa with an accent. Yeah. Letha. 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 <laughs> But she, like, is like, oh, this is something illegal, and the good doctor says, my experiments are more important than the law. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Basically, him becoming powerful is more important than the law. And it's just, like, that typical, like, I'm going to be so powerful. (laughs) Like, that's his... Right. Which we never really see what his exact motivation for that is. Well, and he's trying to pretend, not even pretend, but just trying to say how how moral and how righteous his motives are. Right, with but no, like, why are you like this? Yeah, and her um, motivation is purely cash-related. Which makes sense. I mean, she just yeah. wants that money. She wants to, like, go to Vegas because she has, like, a gambling problem, I guess. Well, yeah, she just has, like, a money problem. She's a rich lady who likes to get it around. Yeah, and she funded, like, his whole lab, so clearly he swindled her. Well, it's got to be in the basement-ish of her castle. Right, but basically, yeah. <laughs> like, so she, so he clearly swindled her, is what I'm saying. Like, into... I wonder if that's actually Betty Davis's castle, because <laughs> that is an impressive <laughs> chunk of property. You know, it probably is, yeah. and it's probably in L.A., and it's probably super expensive. Yeah. But basically, then it, it goes back to where Tia is, and she's alone, And then, but she can kind of see where Tony is. She just sees, like, part of the room that he's in, I guess. No, it's like a hospital. Right, yeah. Yeah, because they're, like, in, and at this point, then they're, like, interrogating Tony about, like, his, um, like, abilities and all this yeah, stuff. and powers, like, oh, what can you do? And he just tells them... Yeah, and then Sickle is like, I don't believe this, and this is one of the most wacky parts of the entire movie. Oh, the gas, the gas yeah, mask chase. Yeah, and he's like, oh, show him, Tony, show him what you can do. So he like chases him around with like an oxygen mask, and he's like, yeah, it's yeah. And then they basically show that the kid's powers can be used for him to be like a maid or a janitor, stack this stuff up, and give us a glass of wine. I'm like, yeah. Because he's right. implanted the same mind control thing on Tony at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he implanted the mind control device, except for it works much better on Tony, which makes no sense because this kid has, like, superpowers. He should be able to easily throw that off. Yet, throughout this movie, he's never even able to sort of throw it off. No. And this is where I first noticed Betty Davis's teeth. God, her <laughs> teeth. Yuck. Well, this is actually where her character starts to become borne out. Yeah. In the beginning, you're not sure what her character is, but here you're like, oh, 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 she's hilarious. Yeah, and then it goes back to the kids, and yeah, they're going to the hospitals. They're like, well, we went to all the hospitals. I'm like, oh, you went to every single hospital in L.A. on foot? Is that what you did? Yeah, Yeah, buddy. (laughs) No, I seriously doubt that. I seriously doubt that. Well, yeah, maybe just in their part of L.A. Right. Which I guess would have been, like, East L.A., since the Rose Bowl's in Pasadena. I don't know where anything in L.A. is. That's I have fine. no ge- geographical reference for that. <laughs> I just know that it's very spread out, and you're not going to go to every single damn hospital on foot. Yeah, no. And then, what happens after that? Letha takes the... takes the. She wants to use Tony for gambling and robbery. 
Right. So she does just that. They oh, send this is, out... She takes him to... Victor. Yeah, so this is the part... I mean, and this part was super long. The part that we've just gone mm-hmm. through was horrifying. I feel like it was like 40 minutes. It was probably something pretty close to that. So this is where she decides she's going to use Tony to steal gold out of the museum because there's yeah. apparently a display of, like, gold bars. That's in the paper. And why in the museum would they have actual gold bars? They wouldn't. Exactly. I mean, and even if they would, it would be under so much more security than it was. Well, there's just no reason to have actual $3 million worth of gold bars in a stupid museum. No, they might have, like, just the outside layer be actual gold bars, and then they would fill it with nonsense. Or one bar. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So they drive up. Oh, because the good doctor has gone to, like, buy... Supplies. Supplies, and so they're, like, doing it behind his back, basically. Yeah, they're like, oh, see you later. We both walked you out to the car for no reason. Bye! And so then they get... They take him, and they go to the museum, and this is, this is where I noticed that Sickle was really skinny. It was when he got out of the car, because he was just sickly. Yeah, he was, <laughs> like, disgustingly coke skinny in the 70s. 70s like it skinny. Was nasty. But basically, they're going to the museum, and I just was thinking, isn't gold, and I don't know if it was different in the 70s, but isn't it like one of the worst things you can steal because it's impossible to get rid of? No, probably not. Not in the 70s. Probably but not ever, really. Really? Nah. I thought, and it's like heavy, and it just. It's super heavy. That was, I mean, it becomes an issue later on. Yeah, and uh, so basically they're in there, and she's like getting him to create a diversion. Yeah, cause chaos. Make the stagecoach move, and he's just making this hilarious scene of museum coming alive, and people are like, oh my god, oh, 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 oh. Did you see the blatantly racist? Oh, the scalping scene. Oh my god, so there's a, one of the, like, guards is on top of the stagecoach, and there's, like, one of the Native American statues with, like, his arm raised with an axe. Yeah, crawling so, up the wagon. So he rips off his toupee and throws it, and they made, like, a very big point of it, and I'm like, really? Yeah, well, it lands on the on the Indian's axe. Like That was just so, that was just not right. And then, so, we get all this craziness. Tia through some clues of seeing through Tony's mind, and the boys help her figure out where they are. So mm-hmm. they're headed to the museum as well. And then the gold bars go flying, which is one of the worst special effects in this movie. And nobody notices it. Like, yeah. I understand there's diversion, but nobody notices, like, just floating gold bars one at a time, which yeah. is like, why wouldn't you just have him move the whole stack if you're going to do it like that? But You would think. And yeah, they have him go... To Mr. Sickle, not stack them in the car, so they just start going flying at Sickle. Right, and it's like you can't catch a gold bar because it's way too heavy and way too fast. So they start banging into the car, and he's like hiding underneath it, and it's like, well, yeah, it's gonna rupture your suspension. Well, yeah, it's breaking the car apart as it's throwing things at it, and then she gets desperate at the end, has him take all the rest of them all in one, all dumps it on the car. Yeah, and then the car breaks because. If you're going to steal $3 million of the gold, you're going to need a dump truck. Like, you yeah, should have stolen that first. Right. Not and... your Ford LTD wagon <laughs> thing, which was awesome. Don't get me wrong. The Woody wagon was rad, but that's not the that's not the car for $3 million of the gold. No. And then, like, at this point, Doctor has shown up. Well, first, so, like. He went to the house and he figured it out. And he shows up, and he's outside, but then simultaneously Tia and the gang has shown up. They get into the museum without tickets, whatever. They're like, Tony! Tony. Well, I think at the time they got in because the chaos was going on. Right. Somebody could really stop them. And so she goes in there, and she's like, yeah, Tony! And then he sees her, he's like, it's my sister. And, like, this is what doesn't make sense. Like, if he's being mind-controlled, and it's so powerful that he can't even stop himself from doing anything, he wouldn't, like, recognize her. Like, he wouldn't, like... You wouldn't think so. Like, it doesn't go together. Yeah. Like, oh, it's my sister. And she's like, well, let's get out of here. And they go outside, and they see the car is all messed up, and then the doctor is there. So she's like, well, I guess we're just going to go with the doctor. And it's like, you did all that, and you're not even going to take a single gold bar? Really? Yeah, and he's (laughs) pissed. Like, the Victor is just, like, irate. He's like, you treacherous, you dummy. You screwed the whole thing up, blah, 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 I mean, blah, and blah. he's not wrong. Well, like, but he is kind of wrong, like, 
he needed to deliver some money for that bitch. Like, that's what you yeah. wanted. And it could have been done a lot easier than that. Yeah. And then, um, so all the kids run out after Tony and they get in the car, but then they see the truant officer. So Tia gets an idea to, like, get in the car and have him chase the other car. Right, to chase down her brother who's also a truant. But my... The funny thing is, to me, is why would the true officer be near a museum? No kid who's going true is going to the museum. No. But, I mean, he just, you know, Disney magic shows up, and yeah. then, you know, he's in the car, and Tia is, of course, controlling the car. Yeah. It, like, spins around, and he's like, oh, what happened? Oh, well, like, we're just going to go along with it. Yeah, he's a good he's a good foil for this, because he's pretty happy-go-lucky, other than catching kids. Oh, uh-huh. Oh my god, and this scene of the car chase is just rad. It's so <laughs> terrible. No, it's no, awesome. in a in a good way. It is awesome. It's terrible in the best way because they're like going down and like they keep basically the car that um Tony is in, they keep telling him to like put blockades in there and she keeps counteracting it. Jumps the car over a train. Like the, the train <laughs> jump was ridiculous. The graphics for that were so bad. It was so hokey. It was literally like I don't even know how they did it to make it so it bad. It almost looked like a toy car jumping over a toy train, kind of. That's probably what it was. But it also kind of looked claymation. I which don't will know. Come back again. And it just it didn't make any sense. Like I just. I was like, oh, oh okay, no. rad. <laughs> and, like, and then at this point, so all of the bad people know that there's a van full of children following them. So then their solution is to make the van, at the end of the chase, go end over end over end by shining a sunlight on them. Yeah, by shining a light in the face of... The driver. Of Mr. Yo-Yo. And all the kids, including Tia. So the car just, like... Spins, I don't know how many times, and is, like, totaled. It, yeah, it flips down, a, like, a San Francisco-style hill. Yeah. And it's funny, because you can see when it when it hits the other car and it goes to flip, you can actually see the ramp that they built to have oh, it flip. Oh, I didn't catch it that. Blew the wood part of it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't you catch that. You can see that. it blow apart down the hill. Oh, <laughs> my God. And, like... And it flips over, just, boom, 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 like a washer and dryer down the hill. And everybody would have been dead. Every single person would have died yeah. on the second tumble. And all the kids just hop out like, no problem, Mr. They're Yoko. like, oh my god, this is crazy. Will the doors even open? Let's get out of here. Mr. Yakamoto just walks out like, no problem. Yeah. And, and nobody's wearing a seatbelt, by the no, way. No, nobody's wearing a seatbelt. So they would have flown out the dash. Like, Tia would have been, well, like, Well, not necessarily out of the dash, but they would have flown out of the sides. Because, though, when you do flips yeah. like that... You start flying out of the side windows of the vehicle, and, like, you get parts of you trapped and cut off immediately. It's nasty. And meanwhile, the, the villains are like, oh, yes, perfect. We're so excited that we just mangled a bunch of children. <laughs> like, it's just, like, so upsetting. And they're just, like, super happy, and they take off in their super villain car. Yeah, and they go back to, um, to the lab, and there's another gem of a line in here. Um, he said, uh, the doctor says something about like my life's work and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you just discovered this kid. How is this your life's work? Or... You jeopardized my life's work. My accountants are desperate. Proved yourself incompetent yet again. Well, the mind control device, I think is <sighs> a part of it, but yeah, God. he's mega maniacal. And he's like, okay, I have an idea for prestige and money. And he... Um, decides to come up with, he proceeds to come up with the dumbest idea I've ever heard. I don't even get it. in every single movie. It's... It's like, no, let's not steal a whole bunch of money first and then do something. It's, let's have this terrible idea all at once. Yeah. But in the meantime, uh, Letha and Victor decide that they need to kill Tia before they go forward. Well, they don't want to kill her, they just need to stop her at this point. The killing comes later. They need to kill her, but they didn't. Which, it's like, if they were smart, they would have put one of those little bugs on her ear, too, and used both of them. I don't think that they had two. I think that this was, like, all he had. Which is just stupid. This was his prototype. Well, no, it's not exactly stupid, because, I mean, back then, building anything costed tons of of dough. Yeah. And was tough. 
so basically then they ha- they make Tony lure Tia with, with his mind yeah. to the house, which like, is oh, like... follow me. And she's just totally trusting, like, I'm going to no- ignore everything that's happened so far and just trust you and follow you. Right. And so they then he's put her in some sort of gas box. Well, that's not... Sickle first puts the chloroform around her face. Oh, God, and one of the that's rapiest, right. uh, Yeah, because it, like, just shows scene. his face blurring out, and I'm like, Yeah, okay. with, his, with, the, with the cloth and his hand over her mouth, and I'm like, oh, he just raped her after this. And then you find her in this, um, like, PVC pipe and plastic tent <laughs> <laughs> with gas. Yeah, but then she, like, they, so they leave, they go to do their plan. Yeah, he says that, that he's put her in a comatose state. But her eyes keep opening, so I'm like, it doesn't... Yeah, he didn't do a good job, because she gets a hold as soon as they leave. Well, she's also, I think, more powerful than Tony is. Maybe. Maybe. I think she is. It's it probably be just because of how everything plays out. Yeah. Yeah. So she, like, is able to talk to the goat that they have, and why do they have a goat? I don't know. Well, she tried to talk to the boys first. I think the goat was, like, an experimental goat. Yeah. Like, they'd, he'd do experiments on the goat, and, you know... Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Uh, his life's work. Um, but, basically, she mind-controls the goat to go get the earthquakes. Yeah, and then, at this point, Alfred becomes the hero of the story. He's a badass. <laughs> He's, like, running down the street, running over the tops of cars, jumping on cars. He boots some guy getting into the same cab, coincidentally, from the beginning, and, like, boots him out and sits in the back seat of the cab, because the cab is magically going where he needs to go, and he knew that. And this is where we find out that the cab wants to be a race car driver. Yeah, because he's, like, talking to him, and he's like, yeah, yeah, and the goat's like, meh, and, like... Yeah, and he keeps (laughs) thinking that the goat is a dude with this, meh, meh, and the guy thinks the goat is an... (laughs) <laughs> which is hilarious. It's one of the funniest things in the movie. movies. Like, what? You don't like me? Man, what the hell? Like, <laughs> and it just, it just reminds you that there used to be a time that you could, like, openly kind of not like somebody and didn't have to be like you're going to bust your gun out and shoot them. Right. Like, you could keep talking to them and, like, you know, have a kind of adversarial relationship. It was... uh it was very refreshing for me. Well, and then he, like, wipes off the mirror, and he's like, oh, my God, you're a goat. I had no idea. <laughs> and so he crashes his, it's like, oh, right. Right. Yeah. After he gives this spiel, he's like, 19 years and 11 months. And in just another month, I'll have my gold star safety standard. I've never had a crash. And as soon as he sees the goat, he crashes his car directly into a cop car. <laughs> and then the door pops off the side, and the goat hops out. You know... No, the door came completely off the cab no, car. No, 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 I know. You see, you, you think that that's like, oh my, like, why would that happen? You don't understand how <laughs> the lead built 70s cars were. I guess. That would happen. But, like, wouldn't all of the doors pop off? Not necessarily. That's how bad they were built, is, like, one door might pop off, uh, the back window might fall out if you got in a crack, like... Gotcha. Like, there's a reason you don't see tons of cars from the 70s and 80s still rolling around unless they have a a Honda or a Toyota on them. Gotcha. <laughs> so, in the meantime, the um, Letha, Sickle, Tony, and um, Victor, the doctor, have rolled up to a plutonium plant, um, <laughs> which is just... Okay. Yeah, a plutonium plant that happens to just conveniently be miles from L.A. where they would never build one. Which also only has one little crappy guard gate on front, and that's the only security it has. Right, and they take the very subtle approach of just levitating the guard gate with the guard into a dump truck that happens to be going out. Mm -hmm. Oh, they take out the, the very bizarre exterior security scanner satellites too which don't make any sense yeah. because there's movement all around that's not going to pick up anything that they're doing right and then it like flashes back to the goat 
who's gotten to the boy's house. And at first they're scared of the goat and they're like trying to climb up. That actually makes sense because city kids would have no context for a goat. I guess. And would be scared. Ah! But they get over it real quick because they're like, hey, he's got Tia's vest. And I'm thinking, wasn't she wearing her vest in the thing? I can't remember the NFL player, but he was an inner city guy. And they had the horse on the field uh-huh. for the NFL game. He's like, man, what about that damn horse? Like, and there's like a whole <laughs> bunch of clips of him being scared of the horse on the field. That's so funny. <laughs> because I mean, if you if you grew up in the in the city and you never left, like you wouldn't know. Well, and you would be nervous because there's here's this huge animal that you've never even interacted with before. That's true. You've only seen those big animals behind, like, Gates, the zoo, probably. Or on, probably not even that. Probably just on TV. Yeah. And to be honest, I've been around a lot of horses from being a young kid. I still hate horses. Well, I mean, <laughs> horses, when they are up close to them, are kind of terrifying. Yeah. Because they're huge. But they're scared, but then they're like, he's got Tia's vest. And I'm like, she... Yeah, as soon as he takes the vest, they're after him. So she left her vest at the house. Is that what it is? Like, well, it looked so. It looked like maybe she left her vest and her shoes, even though they didn't really pick that up. But she did leave the house in a hurry because he started talking to her. She left without her shoes. I don't know. And so that's why I was like, wasn't she wearing? Wouldn't she have been wearing her vest? Like it was very confusing. Maybe not though. Maybe she was getting ready to go to bed, and then he started talking to her, and she just took off. Right, no but vest. she put her jacket on. She never took that jacket off. That was a sweet So how did she get the jacket. vest off? Wasn't the vest under the jacket? Well, I mean, maybe she took the vest off because she was warm or something. Oh, God, it's so confusing. Put the jacket back yeah, on. Yeah, no, her 70s, like... Power suit? That thing but, was rocking. But it wasn't even, like... At first I thought it was a skirt, and I was like, no, those are, like, gaucho pants. Like, yeah, yeah. Like... The way she was dressed was red. It was, like, a bright red gaucho <laughs> power suit. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So, basically, they all chase the goat, and they make it back, like, and get her out of the bubble, and then she's like, come on, we need to find Tony, right? Right, 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 right. And then, meanwhile, they're back at the power plant. And so, well, but somehow Tia sees the power plant, or at least, like, the round ball. Yeah. So, one of the earthquakes is like, oh, I know where a ball is. Right. And they... But she can see, like... What he sees, like, flashes. flashes of it, right? Yeah. But, yeah, and, of course, it's not the right ball, but they find that out later. Right, so Gannon Victor's genius plan for fame and money is to have the plutonium plant melt down in the middle of L.A. for a ransom with a super quick timer, like... Get $5 million in cash together in 10 minutes. It right. wasn't 10 minutes, but it was, like, a stupid amount of time. And then give us, like, safe harbor to the airport. Let us fly away so we can do this somewhere else in the other world. It's like, okay, this is the dumbest plan you've ever had. Right. Because, and the, the part that bothered me the most about the end of this movie, well, there was a couple of things that were bothersome, but... <laughs> <laughs> It's just like the manager of the power plants. Like, oh, I guess we have to pay him. It's like it's not even like the FBI. Like all these these government agencies would be called in and swoop in immediately if something like this happened, even in the seventies. The government agencies would have already. They live there already. They're but that's, there all that's the time. That's what I'm saying. They're just yeah. like, and the scientists are just like idiots. They're just like, I don't know what's happening, and oh, what's happening? What's to, happening? To, to be honest, that actually checks out. Oh, God. But they were just like, I don't know what to do. And the plant manager was like, guess we got to pay him $5 million. And Which, honestly, in that situation, 100%. Like, you can't screw around with a nuclear reactor. I know. <laughs> but it would have been more believable if they would have had some, like, official-looking, like, person doing that. Not just like, oh, hey, my name is Jim. I'm plant manager. Yeah, like... I, I have a lab coat. <laughs> no, 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 no. The plant manager was, like, clearly dressed in, like, a manager outfit. Oh, yeah, I guess he, he was. He yeah, wasn't. Okay. Yeah. But basically, then at this point, they go and Tia's like, that's not the ball because it's, like, a big golf ball is what the kids saw. Yeah, a billboard. And then they see uh, Mr. Yamamoto again. Yakamoto. Oh, yeah, Yakamoto. Well, I keep wanting to call him Yo-Yo because the Yakamoto doesn't come up until later. 
Right. And they're like, well, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm going to get fired. I wrecked the car and I damaged city property. And they overhear, he's like, the only thing that works in the car is the radio. And so they overhear the thing going on at the power plant. And she was like, that's what I saw. Magically, she yeah, knows. That's that's what it is. That's That's got to be Tony. Oh, no, because they said something about motion, flow, particle it, flow. Matter flow or something. Matter flow. And it's like, wait. How nobody, would they? How nobody, would they know that? Nobody would ever say that. Yeah, for one, and that was what got her. Um, and so she magically pumps up the tires. Pumps the tires as Mr. Yamamoto or Yokomoto is pouring his heart out about why he does what he does. And <laughs> He's so, like, I just wanted to help some kids, you know. Yeah, and like I want him to say thank you, Mr. Yokomoto. You're not. I'm not a thug because of you. And so then he like helped. Which makes total sense. He's such a nice guy. Like And so basically he gets in the car and he's like, Alright, we're gonna go and they get up there and they just get past in the midst of everyone evacuating the plant they just drive up, she lifts the gate, and the guards are just like, okay, bye. We can't help you. Well, so, this was before people adopted, after 9-11, the shoot anyone first, ask questions right. later mentality, which we should go back to this mentality from the 70s of not shooting people ever. Right. And letting them but go But it was through. just like they didn't even, like, try to run after them or anything. They were just like, well, oh, they kind of okay. did, but how are you going to run after a van? Like, I, I guess. I don't know. I a just, press of the gas pedal, you're not catching oh, it. Oh, and meanwhile, when, when um, I keep wanting to call him Pete, but when um, Tony and Victor and Letha and Sickle and the, the bad guys, when they get in there, they have to get past this guard who's, like, asking for their IDs, and they just levitate him. So he's been levitated this entire time. And he has a huge gun on his hip, and yeah. he didn't do anything with it, which is, once again, goes back to my point of, uh, you that's what you do, is you just don't do anything. And so they, like, unlevitate him, and then in all of this chaos, well, before they get there, they're running in there, and they're like, I know, where where do we go? And the people are like, it's sealed, we can't get in there. And they're like, we know. And then there was something that happened in this part where I was like, oh, what? Okay, that Mr. Yakamoto did. I don't know if you caught it. Oh, no, where he checks out the Asian scientist lady? The only other Asian person in the entire movie, and he's like, oh, hey. And I'm like... Okay. That checks <laughs> out. That, to me, checked out. I, know. I thought it was hilarious. It was just he's so... He's like, oh, what's up, girl? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> it was just so, like, random. He's like, you fine? What's up? I, I thought that was great. I thought it was really I funny. know, it was just so random. But they get in, and then the, the the guy who was levitating is still there. He's like, y'all need to get me down. And, like, he just knows they're going to be able to get him down. So they do, and then he's like, you can't get past me without ID. So they re-levitate him. Yeah, and it's just like, dude, come on. And so they You're go right. in there, and, you know, of course, they see, they see Tony, and the people are getting the ransom money together, but they don't have all of it. And then... Uh, basically, they start chasing all the kids around. Yeah, and like Scooby Doo style. But Letha is willing to take the three and a half million, where Victor's like, "I don't compromise." Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but they're chasing all the kids around like Scooby Doo style. Like, yeah. Why would you have Letha chasing kids? She wouldn't. Like any of those ten year old kids will whoop that old lady's ass. Yeah. No. She. She won't. Then it's like the most, one of the most messed up sequences I think we've seen in any of the movies that we've watched. <laughs> um, basically, Victor is, because they find, because um, they go back like to the furnace room and Tia, uh, Tia has found it and she's been like reversing it. Yeah. And her and Tony are like mentally fighting back and forth. To go have it go up and down, up and down, because then the scientists think like, oh, it's fi- it's working or whatever. But Tia wins. Tia wins, and that's why I say she's smarter than Tony. But then the messed up part starts happening, and Victor is like telling Tony to kill her. Yeah. And like they he they have like this thing where they're throwing stuff at each other, and it's like more bad. She's like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> why are you using your powers against me? Well, she yells that when, like, he tells Tony to pretend to remember her and lure no, her. No, no, She first started saying that when he threw that beam at her. Oh, that's right. Like, the thing yeah. that was, like, going to impale her. And she, like, and blocked sudden, it. Yeah, and suddenly after he tells him, oh, pretend like to remember her, she's like, okay. 
And he's like, lure her into the middle of the room and then crush her with that big generator. No, it's a crane. A crane, crane. whatever. And I was like, what? And so he, she walks out, and then he starts lowering it, and it like he stops it because he's clearly mentally like. Oh, I thought she stopped. Oh, maybe it. she stopped it. Yeah. I don't know, but she's like about to be crushed, and he's like, she's like, why are you doing like, don't do it, and he's like, crush her, finish her, and I was. Well, and she finally sees him talking into that silver box. But like, crush her, finish her, like really. <laughs> Well, from that old I psycho, know, yeah. It was so messed up. So she finally gets it and melts the mind control unit. Right. And so then he can't control him, and then the box, she gets out, and Tony's like, I don't know what happened. Where was I? And, and she grabs the little device from behind his ear, like a trick quarter. Yeah, and he's <laughs> like, oh, and then he has flashes of everything that happened, and he was like, oh, my God. And then, of course, all the adults come in, sequ- like, sequence, and they just levitate them up onto this little beam thing. Yeah, this little beam that somebody had been painting with, because there's a paint can up there. Yeah, and, like, when they do it to um, Lisa, she's just, like, as she's being raised up, she's like, eh, okay. Like, she has yeah. no reaction. She's just like, this is happening, whatever. Yeah, it's a great piece of acting by <laughs> Betty Davis in that part. <laughs> And Sickles, of course, now is Rhea afraid of heights, and he's flipping out. Right. So then it doesn't show them, like, getting captured by anybody. Then it just goes to them being outside with Mr. Yakamoto, and they're like, oh, we're going to fix his car. Yeah, because she's explaining to Tony, like, oh, he really helped us, and he's really sad. He's like, oh, well, we should fix it. Uh, I'll take care of the engine, you take care of the body work. Uh, Let's go to it. And then there's this hilarious yes. claymation fixing the van scene that is not like anything I've ever seen well, it's in like, any movie or TV show it's ever so before. Weird. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why is this claymation? Like, why? why? Well, and like, if she can, so I guess I don't really understand if she can manipulate matter, why is she also able to make paint magically reappear? Like, No, that makes perfect sense. If they can really uh, manipulate matter, I mean, I guess I don't. I, don't I mean, know. really, if you could stretch a little bit of paint to cover up all the parts that got scraped off, it would work. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but but it, they do it, and it's like, okay, now it's Yakamoto's word against the school board. Well, they never saw the car. He's like, they never saw yeah. it, so I'll just say they exaggerated. And he takes them to the stadium, because apparently a whole week has passed in this period of time. Well, we never actually found out how long they were supposed to be they there. Said, he said, I'll see you in a week, when they he dropped them off. He said, I'll see you on Friday. Oh. I thought he said a week. Nice. No, okay. Friday. But so they take them back to the stadium, and then all of the kids just go, and they like... They levitate all the kids over the gate, which is funny. Which I'm like, how are they going to get back over the gate? But whatever. Yeah. Um, and well, they... that was before kids were too fat to climb a fence. Yeah. But they go and they just see the same cheesy flying saucer with, you know, old Uncle Benny there. Stuck underneath it. And, like, <laughs> they run over. They're like, okay, bye. Will we ever see you ever again? Oh, it's hard to say. Right, which is like, are we going to have a third movie? But... <laughs> Not for a long time, kid. You're going to already be growing up doing coke. Sorry. <laughs> um, but basically... Then they go away in the flying saucer, the kids go back, and they agree to go back to school, because they're like, do you think we can be as smart as, you know, these two? And as smart as Tia and Tony? And yet, Mr. Agamotto's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's like, hell no, you can't be as smart as them, you dumb <laughs> And they're like, we saw a UFO, and he's like, I don't believe that, I've seen a lot, but I don't believe that. And then he, like, gets in the car, and they all, they're waving at Tia and Tony. And yeah, T- but Mr. Yakamoto's the only one that doesn't see, because he doesn't take his eyes off the road. Right, and so then T- you can see Tia and Tony and Uncle Benny just like, ah, waving back at them. Oh, and the goat is in the backseat of the car at the same time? The goat is is really the hero of this movie, and nobody the- wants to talk about it. The goat is rad. <laughs> Yeah, his name is Alfred. Alfred the Goat. But, and that's the end. Yeah, it, it just ends. It, yeah, it's um, it's something. It is, it is. <laughs> so what's your favorite part of this movie? Um, you know, 
I think I gotta go with the van car chase. Of course. The like, car chase is the pinnacle of this movie. So I did like the part at the museum too, but the museum is funny, it's fine. I personally, if I'm gonna pick a second one, I'm going for Alfred the Hero. Oh yeah, okay, that's pretty good too. <laughs> because he's pretty awesome. In the in the cab, actually, that part was pretty good. <laughs> well, the whole part of him jumping over all the cars. Getting in the cab, <laughs> and like it's not—they didn't pick a dog, which would be, or like a monkey even, no. which would be like the normal thing you would think about science lab. It was a goat. They picked it was a goat. Hilarious. <laughs> Probably the cheapest animal they could get for sight. Yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, I think I would go with the van car chase. Yeah, it has to be. That's really an excellent part of this movie. Because it has all the people in it. And... Has all the people. Has all the horrible cheese of the movie. Like, it really encapsulates the whole movie. Yeah, it's... God, this... Yeah. <laughs> as far as songs, I mean, really, you just have the 70s jams background music. Yeah, There's the, not even a theme, theme song, the, though. The brown chicken, brown cow, and then the suspense music. Yeah, which like... Which is all really good, actually. Yeah, um, no, it was fine. It was fine. The main character, I don't know if it's Thea, or if it's Tia, or if it's Victor and Letha. It's... Like, only, that's what I wrote, is, like, the villains are almost the main characters. Like, Letha and Victor are pretty much the main... Like, I know that it's really about Tia and Tony. But Tony's not a character in No, this because movie. he doesn't do anything. Yeah. He's a he's a, a mind-controlled robot yeah. literally the entire movie, yeah. except for, like, the first five minutes and, like, the last, like, two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, Tony doesn't register. No, but, I mean... But I put Tia because... She she actually carries this movie pretty well. Yeah, and she and does she does a really good job. And she is more powerful than Tony because she was mm. able to override him when they were fighting. But again, he was under mind control, so maybe she's just more powerful than the mind control device. But also, maybe. he wasn't able to overpower the mind control device. That's so. Right. And then you have Victor, the egomaniacal, <laughs> typical, uh, mad scientist. Basically, the same character he plays in Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And you have Letha, the rich gambling hoe, who's old. With bad teeth. Yeah. Well, back I'm, then, I'm never going to forget that. In the 70s, bad teeth was just a given at her age. Oh, God. Uh, so and bad. then you have Stricker. Sickle. Just a stickle. Sickle. A skinny douche. Yeah, he was pretty gross. Like, yeah. Ugh. And he had, yeah, he had like pock marks all over his yeah. face. And he was, he was her nephew, right? Yeah, for like, some reason. Yeah. So it's. Thug. And then yeah. for side characters, you have the Earthquakes, who are Dazzler, just ridiculous. Dazzler, Muscles, Crusher, and Rocky. Well, that's good for you for remembering them all. <laughs> I didn't. I just I had to look on IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Yakamoto, who yeah. was a pimp. All I ever wanted in life was all you kids that I put back in school someday visit me and say, thanks, Mr. Yo-Yo. <laughs> like as well, soon as I mean, he checked out that chick, I was like, "No, this guy's pimping. This guy's getting it." Yeah, no, he he was funny. Um, yeah, it was just it was a gem of cast of characters there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, what did you think about the cinematography? I mean, the special effects were laughable. Like they're, just hilarious. But they're so realistic. Yeah. Like real, I yeah, really real. thought there was a flying saucer. Yeah, yeah. I really thought that that. That that van jumped, like, in a perfect arc on both sides of the train, but with no realistic actual... It just went like this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you said they had ramps exploding, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the, for the final downhill scene of the chase, you could see the ramp explode when the van overturns and tumbles down the hill. You can see the ramp. You can see all the wood from the ramp explode. I definitely did not see that. Yeah. I just was focused on, well, there's a van of children just going end over <laughs> I mean, end. I was thinking about that too, but <laughs> I saw I saw the, the wooden ramp explode, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> what was... um? Oh, and... And for the cinematography, it's just super 70s. Like, oh my god, it couldn't be more 70s if it tried. Low budget 70s, yeah. Like, it just looks so 70s. It's, yeah. What was it? Well, and like when they're in the car and they're just like, you know, and they got like the track of the things that's yeah. supposed to simulate driving <laughs> behind them that hasn't been done since probably the 50s, with like people pushing on the car to make yeah. the suspension mounts, yeah. Um, 
what was your biggest surprise or disappointment? So, it, it's hard to have anything be surprising because I didn't know what to expect. But I was very surprised at how good the second half was because of how awful the first half was. The yeah. first half of this movie, or even like the first... 20 minutes. Third, maybe more like first 35 minutes, were just like an awful turd. And I was angry, and I hated the fact that I had to watch the rest of the movie. But the second half really pulled it out of the gutter and made it something at least enjoyable. And by the end, I was like laughing and having a fairly good time watching this awful movie. Yeah. Um, I was just surprised at the two... So you, like for how low budget this movie clearly was, that they were able to get Betty Davis and Christopher Lee. Like, pretty, like, well-known actors. But was Christopher Lee really well-known I then, mean, or I think he's al- I think he's always been a well-known actor. Maybe. Maybe. But even just getting Betty Davis, who is, like, a huge actress, to do this low-budget movie. I mean, maybe everyone else was like, you got too much jacked-up teeth, like, we're not going to have you on camera anymore, I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, she didn't have a lot of options. It was probably a really good payday. She probably had some taxes to ban her out. Like, (laughs) I mean, she probably just needed a little bit of cash. Yeah. I mean, think about, you know, Herbie is like, Herbie Goes Bananas, I should say, is a year or two after this. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that, you know... Our lady and dude had the same problem. Like That's true. And maybe it's just that, you know, being in a Disney movie was, like, at this point, like, a good thing. At least, like, the live action ones were... I think it was a paycheck. That's what I mean. Like, it, I don't know. Yeah, you took the paycheck, they used your good name, and you made a crappy movie together, and that was that. <laughs> Oh, come on. People were lining up around the block. They had to see the thrilling sequel to... <laughs> To the Witch Mountain. Return of Witch Mountain. Return to Witch Mountain. It, nothing about the title of this makes Return any from sense. Witch Mountain. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen the first one, so. Yeah, I guess so. I think Witch Mountain is just where they live. So the story holds no water. It is like every terrible 70s television show wrapped up into a ball. And, like, their craziest story all in one stupid movie. Yeah, the story was not good. Um, It just needed more. Like, it just wasn't... I don't know. It wasn't very good. Yeah, I mean, having his grand idea to be to hijack the plutonium plant to make money and notoriety was just... As lot. opposed to, like, robbing a bank or something, like a normal person. To get money and then get notoriety? Yeah. He is a moron. Yep. Just, yeah. Um, probably why he hasn't gotten notoriety yet. Because he's, he's an old man. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, like, clearly just messing stuff up. This is... I don't know what I was thinking this one. I mean, obviously, I had some idea. I had no idea. Well, so I knew it was, like, going to be these two siblings. I was pretty sure. And they had some sort of... Like, I was pretty sure they were aliens. And they had some sort of, like... Remember? Because I was talking about it last week. I was like, yeah, there's, like, two kids and they're siblings. And they put their hands together and they have powers. I didn't think they were aliens. I thought they were witches, maybe. No, I think they're aliens. Oh, no, they're definitely aliens. But that's... Yeah, but that's what I was, like... So I kind of knew there was going to be, like, a sci-fi sort of fantastical element to it, but I was not expecting, um... Like, X-Men meets meets 70s weird L.A. Like, Like the only thing this movie was missing was, uh, uh, Chips. Yeah. Eric Estrada and John Baker showing up and being like, I just... Pulling them over would have been hilarious. Was not (laughs) expecting, like, um, 70s child abduction molestation we should have though because that's what all the 70s were about was just like abducting molesting killing like it, that's that's the whole thing crush her finish her <laughs> just so upset <laughs> i just that was just like so what like this is a disney movie like yeah what yeah it was it was a little dark but strange so any final thoughts about wow the- <laughs> That's my only thought. It's just wow. Like, I'm amazed by this movie. I just hope the first one is better. 
when we watch it. It's got to be, right? I, I'm going to say it doesn't have to be. Because some of this movie was awesome and some of this movie was awful. I hope it's better. <laughs> um, what was your rating? No, what was your rating? You're supposed to give your rating, I give mine, and then I give the Rotten Tomatoes rating. Oh my god, I hate it. I feel like you change your rating. No, my rating is written down. <sighs> I gave this movie a 32%. Ooh, we are super close. I give it 39. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where you got that extra, like... The extra seven? Know. I really liked the end of this movie. I found myself going from the first 20 to 40 minutes of being like, I hate this movie, to really enjoying the end. I really enjoyed the end of this movie. All right, fair it was, enough. It was, it was fun, it was good, it was hilarious, it was stupid. Had some crushing children involved crushing in there. Crushing children so. involved, yeah. I really liked it. Dudes checking out chicks. Right. <laughs> so, what do you think the Rotten Tomatoes Oh, God. I mean, it can't be good. Like, I don't know, probably like 57%. So, with the critics, it's 50. It's 50-50. Oh, okay. With the people, it's 40. So, we're totally in line with the main thoughts of this, you think a little less of it. I mean, the forty percent. Me and the people are. Wait, what was your rating? Thirty-nine. Okay. I just, I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect out of any of these live-action movies. Like they're so random. Like so random. Like how do they even pitching these movies? They're like, oh hey, like I guess was Walt. Still alive at this point, or was he dead already? I think he was dead already, wasn't oh, yeah, he? Yeah, he was long dead. They're like, oh hey, head of Disney Studios, like wasn't that his brother? Well, oh, this was produced by Ron Miller, who was like a producer for Disney for a long time. But like, they were like, oh hey, Roy, like let's make this move. Like I just thinking about these movies being pitched, they're just so wacky. I just don't know how they got made. Like. Like, oh, yeah, it's about these, like, telepathic, matter-moving siblings and they're aliens and they're going to go and take over a Pluto. Like, I just, it's so, oh, yeah, we're going to try to crush her at the end. Like, it just, like, these are supposed to be family movies. Like, it's just so weird. I don't know. It's just, I don't get it. So I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. It's my favorite part. What number did we get? 291. 291. Okay, so is this the 2000s? It is. Did you already know what it is? I do know what it is. Is it live action? It is not. Oh. Animated 2000s. Okay, so it's either going to be like one of those super crappy ones that they made in there that like I didn't see, or it's going to be, is it, or is it, is it sort of animated or is it full animated? What do you mean by sort of? Well, like when we watched The Incredibles, you were like sort of. Yeah, it's a sort of. Is it Finding Nemo? It is not Finding Nemo. Oh, okay. What is it? It is from 2006. It is Cars. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. Oh, boy. Y'all are in for a really fun podcast. This is like planes, but maybe but it's better. Probably slightly better, but boy, David, just wait for a drunk, angry David. It for has cars. Larry the Cable Guy. It's gonna be yeah. bad. Why do I? Why am I warning the audience that? Like the next only week's gonna be dark. Good thing that's come out I'm of cars. Because I'm gonna have to talk about Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. God, I hate it. I hate it. Oh, boy. <laughs> like, the only good thing that came out of Cars is the Cars Land and the ride in Disneyland. <laughs> it's like the only... I would, I would argue that that's not good at California Adventure either. The ride is fun? No, 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 It's the Radiator Springs Racers where you're in oh, the car. Oh, Radiator Springs is rad. Yeah. That... But isn't that the same ride that the... It's the same as Test Track. Yeah, Test Track is better. Well, yeah, obviously, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it's, like, and also, well, and eh, the whole, like, the the whole, like... No, I take that back. Radiator Springs is better. The Radiator Springs is awesome, and, like, the whole, the way they did, like, the Red Rock and the whole scenery, like, that is really cool. That is cool. I don't like the rest of the Cars theming in 
California Well, we've never seen the movie, so maybe this will be your new favorite movie. You could be like, oh my god, I love Cars. I can't wait to watch Cars 2. It's entirely possible. Although, I am super glad but, we got the first one before we got, like, Cars 3, yeah, so we can, like, understand the context later. It is good, but getting me past Larry the Cable Guy is going to be really, like, moving Mount Rainier... There's no getting past it. It, it sucks. Like, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, terrible. There's so, a reason he didn't stay popular. Yeah. Okay. So, <sighs> next week will be Cars. Um, in the meantime, if you'd like to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram at the Disney Movies, at the Disney Movies of the Hearts, uh, you can send us an email at the Disney movies with the or at it's the just, Disney at movies the... <laughs> at gmail.com. Sorry. Um, yeah, we really like to have uh, subscribers. That's what I like most. Yep, and please uh, leave a comment uh, or review. Uh, those five star reviews really do help a lot, so we appreciate that. Um, and yeah, share it with if you have anybody who likes Disney movies, likes podcasts. Um, needs just some entertainment, some lighthearted entertainment. Uh, yeah, you know where to find us. Yeah, we keep it lighthearted. Um, definitely, if you have anything about the show you'd like us to change or you think is would like you to be different, please send us an email so I can laugh at you. And, uh, <laughs> or if you have questions about that you would like us to answer <laughs> about any of these movies, you can do an AMA about any of the movies we've watched. Yeah, and that we'll, is true. We'll, I, we'll answer those questions. And we highly encourage you to watch the movies with us because they are all fun, even in their awfulness. Yes. So in the meantime, this has been At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. Bye! Bye. I just, I was like, what is happening right now? Why do you have a potholder with ice in it? (laughs) Some ingenuitive.